In today's video, I'm going to be showing you the best method for taking on the Wasp Queen in Grounded 1.2. Now, this took a lot of testing. I tested as many different things as I could in the new version of the game. So if you appreciate the effort I put in, please leave a like on the video. The first thing I tested out was bows. Was the crossbow going to be any good against the Wasp Queen? Now, I used salty arrows here as the Wasp Queen is weak to salt damage. This is something that isn't very good for multiple reasons. The first is salt arrows are non-renewable. You need to recraft them every time you shoot them, which is going to cost you a lot of salt. You don't want to be wasting that much salt every time you kill the Wasp Queen. Secondly, the bow doesn't block one of the attacks. The Wasp Queen has a stinger attack and so do the Wasps, and this can only be blocked using a shield. It can't be parried using two-handed weapons like the crossbow. So I'm going to head and rule out the crossbow here because it's not very good as an option. So, that's the first weapon we're not going to use against the Wasp Queen. The next thing I wanted to test was the Mask of the Mother Demon. As you can see, when you hit the Wasp Queen, it does inflict poison upon her from the Mask of the Mother Demon. However, the big issue here is that the Wasp Queen is 75% resistant to poison. She's also 75% resistant to gas damage. So, poison is going to be a really bad build against her. You don't want to use it. This is something I used in the past to kill the Mantis, and it was really, really effective. But when it comes to fighting the Wasp Queen, it's going to be extremely ineffective. So, poison was another damage type that I had to rule out here. My next choice was to go with the Black Ox Armor and the Prod Smacker to see if, with the sped up charged attacks, we could stun her permanently. Now, this was changed a bit in 1.2, as there's now a delay between stunning enemies. So, this build got massively nerfed, as far as I'm aware. And when using this against the Wasp Queen, uh, it actually didn't stun her at all. She just kept flying. So this build is also ruled out. It's clearly not good enough to be able to take on the Wasp Queen. Next, I tried out the Club of the Mother Demon. And while this does inflict venom, which still does full damage as far as I'm aware, because poison resistance doesn't account for venom resistance. So venom will still do full damage even if the enemy is resistant to poison. Uh, but the problem with this was that the weapon is two-handed still, so you're going to get hit by those stinger attacks, which are really, really painful. Uh, but other than that, the Club of the Mother Demon is not a terrible choice. But um, yeah, just the problem is that stinger attack that you can't block, uh, especially when you get those wasps coming into the arena, you can't block any of the attacks. It's going to get really, really dangerous. Next, I tried a Crit Bleed build using the Scythe of Blossoms. Now, this was really powerful, one of the most powerful builds I used. But it wasn't the most powerful, and the Scythe of Blossoms is, of course, two-handed. So, yet again, you can't block that Stinger attack. Next, I wanted to try the Toenail Scimitar with the Fire Ant armor. As the Toenail Scimitar had been buffed in the most recent update, it actually does more damage now. And uh, the point here was to reduce the enemy's defense as much as possible to see if we could do a lot more damage. Now, this, again, was a pretty good strategy. It worked pretty well. Uh, it definitely wasn't the best strategy, but I would definitely recommend this if you have a Salty Toenail Scimitar for some reason. Take it into the fight and give it a go. Obviously, it is a one-handed weapon, so you can use the shield along with it. Uh, you don't have to use the uh, Fire and Armor, but that was what I went with, as it also reduces the enemy's defense even further, which is pretty effective. The next thing I wanted to test was whether I could use multiple daggers to stack bleed damage. Now, this isn't possible, unfortunately, because the way Assassin works is the bleed proc is from the mutation, not from the dagger itself, which means that you can't have a mutation proc multiple times, so you can't stack loads of stacks of bleed. Uh, the most stacks of bleed you can actually get in the game, I think, is three. Using crow feather arrows, the Assassin mutation, and the uh, Assassin armor as well gives you another stack. So there's only three stacks I think you can get at once. Next, I tried the Salt Morning Star with the full set of Assassin armor. And yet again, this armor was pretty decent. Um, this was a pretty good loadout, but it wasn't perfect. It wasn't what I was looking for. The Salt Morning Star was obviously buffed recently, so I wanted to test it out. And uh, this is a good option if you have it, but it's not the option I'm going to go with in this video. Here we are in the Wasp Queen's Nest. I'm going to be showing you the build real quick. So... The first thing you'll notice is before I've even started, I have comfy defense and comfy energy. You get these from sleeping in the petal bed, which I would highly recommend is going to boost your defense and reduce your exhaustion time during the boss fight. Let's take a look at the items I've chosen. The weapon of choice is actually going to be the Widow Dagger, along with the Fire Ant Shield. The reason I chose the Fire Ant Shield is because it has block corrosion, which means when you perfect block, it has a chance to reduce enemy defense for a short time, which means you can deal more damage. Uh, the Widow Dagger, it does do poison, but this isn't the reason we're using it. Uh, it is a very good weapon, very fast, and I'll explain why we're using it soon. 
We have the black ox crossbow. Now, you don't need this, and you're probably not going to use it. But I brought this with some pollen arrows, because what you could do is you could pull out your black ox crossbow with pollen arrows and do this now, because you can block cancel attacks. And you could probably stun the absolute living crap out of the wasps, which would cause them to fall to the ground, and then you could do damage to them. Next, we have the uh, mutation... Uh, the Trinket, along with the armor, we're going to go with Thor's Pendant. The reason for this is it gives a load of buffs to a bunch of different stats, including crit hit chance and crit damage, which is very important. Then we're going to go with a full set of Assassin Armor. Now, the reason we're going to go with this full set Sleek is it gives you crit stun, which means crit supply additional stun damage, uh, which isn't really that important. The set bonus is you increase your crit chance after dealing a crit, so you can chain crits over and over again. They are light armor, which uh, I guess gives you more stamina, but it makes you take more damage. Uh, and you have Cutman, which means your crits cause enemies to bleed. So if you do land a critical hit, it will cause enemies to get a bleed effect, which is very, very nice. We uh, For the smoothie of choice for healing, I've actually gone with the Waspidol. Now, this is because if you get hit at any point during this fight, it's going to give you a poison effect. Using this Waspidol will cure this effect at any point during the fight. And you want to get rid of this poison as soon as you get hit. Because it's very important that you aren't poisoned. Uh, then, obviously, we have the BBQ medley. You need it to summon the Wasp Queen. If you haven't got this, you're probably going to struggle to even start the fight. Uh, and then we've got the Spider Slider for increased crit hit chance. We have the Fiber Bandages, the Sticky Boost Juice, the Liquid Rage, Human Food, Green Machine, Fuzz on the Rocks. You don't need the smoothies. I'm just using them because it makes the boss fight a little easier. They're not essential. Uh, I'm not using the crit smoothie. You could use that, but it does require the Wasp Queen head. If you wanted to use that on your first time killing the Wasp Queen, you'd have to go into the fight, steal the head from the Wasp Queen using either Sticky Fingers or Rogue Rascal, and then die, and then loot your body, and then use it to craft the smoothie, and then go back into the boss fight with the smoothie equipped. Mutation-wise, we have Assassin. This is going to uh, make it so you do increased bleed damage. That's basically it. it it's going to make it so your daggers bleed the enemies, and it does a lot of damage. Coupe de Gras and Trapper Peeper. Uh, you probably won't have phase 3 of this, but just whatever phase of Trapper Peeper you have is pretty useful. And then Spicy Safety and Cardio Fan. Cardio Fan for Exhaustion Recovery. Spicy Safety, uh, I just couldn't find another damage mutation to use, so I used Spicy Safety instead. Uh, the uh, Wasps do do stabbing damage, and this it reduces your damage, the damage you take from stabbing attacks. So it's pretty useful. Um, essentially, you'll notice that the, bleed we've, uh, the build we've gone with here is going to be a mix of... Massive bleed with massive crit and a little bit of poison thrown in as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to summon the boss. We're going to pop our um, all our different effects, which does take a little while to do. Uh, and this boss fight should be um, a breeze, essentially. So she's going to spawn in. We're going to avoid these attacks. It's very important you just avoid the explosives. Um, if any of these do hit you, just pop a smoothie. Get rid of the bleed. Get rid of the poison effect as soon as possible. Okay, she's coming down, so we get the hit on her. As you can see, she's poisoned and she's bleeding right now. Uh, she's also hitting me. I'm just going to pop a wasp adult, get rid of that poison effect. Okay, she's screaming, which means the first set of wasps are going to come in. Although I don't see them right now. Oh, there they are. They're on the far side. Look. Oh, you know what it is? I have um, Bugs Ignore players on. Sorry about that. Medium difficulty as well. So we're just going to keep doing damage here. Um, the, the wasp's ignoring me here. Let me... Excuse me, sir. You're supposed to be fighting me. We're supposed to be in a battle here. See how it stunned him with the first arrow? The only problem is they don't stay stunned for very long. Um, but you'll see how good they are in a second. Look at this wasp queen. She can't even take off. She's too busy sitting on the ground. Oh, these you want to avoid. <laughs> these bombs that she does when she does this attack, she shoots like two or three bombs out. And these things will... Um, Give you an effect that reduces the amount that your smoothies and anything else heals you. Which is really, really, really strong. And uh, basically means you're not going to be able to heal anymore if you get hit with it. So you want to be very careful. These bombs that she's doing now, I'm not too worried by. These wasps, by the way, have reduced health. You can just tear through them really easily. Um, the only thing you should be worried about is the drone. But it's not uh, spawned in yet. So we'll deal with that when it arrives. Okay, avoid the bombs, avoid the bombs. We don't want to get hit by those. Just perfect block that, although it didn't perfect because I have the debuff right now that doesn't let me perfect block. 
I think I took a hit there, so we're just going to get rid of the poison effect. You'll notice the bleed is what's doing a lot of damage while she's flying around. Okay, here comes... Oh, no, no drone again. No drone. So I just need to hit these wasps once, and they'll just die of bleed damage. You don't even need to worry about it. Look, as soon as I get one hit in, the wasp just died. You get one hit, and then you just leave the wasp alone to do whatever it wants. Okay, she's just doing the big bomb attack. I'm not really worried about this attack. I'm just going to keep going in. If it does hit me, just pop a wasp adult. Nothing crazy. Uh, this is on medium difficulty, by the way. So we're not exactly on woe, but there's no need to be on woe. Okay, we need to avoid that attack because that's going to give us a debuff that we don't want. That's the main attack to avoid because it's going to stop you from healing, which is going to make your life really difficult. But as long as you have wasp adults, honestly, you should be fine. Right, we're just going in on her right now. Second bleed effect procs very rarely, but once you do get it to proc, it's uh, it's really good. They stack really heavily. So you can see right now she's taking a lot of damage. Okay, we need to avoid that attack. We don't want that hitting us. Yeah, you'll see that that bleed is just rolling through her. And uh, the reason we choose the dagger is because it's an extremely fast swinging weapon, which means we can get a lot of attacks in, which increases the chance of us landing a crit hit, which gives us that second bleed effect. Just based on the number of attacks per second, essentially. Um, she's going to end up dying of bleed here, probably. Oh, that, that dangerous effect hit me. Yeah, you've got to be careful of that one. But luckily, she's already almost dead, so we're fine. There you go. She's going to die of bleed. And there we go. The Wasp Queen is defeated. Easy peasy. Wasn't even that difficult. Um, you get the drops from her. Nothing crazy. You probably want to run, by the way, a second loadout of mutations uh, that has Rascal Rogue on. And then mid-fight, you can switch back to your main mutation set, just so you can at least uh, loot an extra drop from her. Same with Sticky Fingers, you want to run that, loot an extra drop, and then switch to the Thor's Pendant as soon as you can. Uh, just for, you know, make your life a little bit easier. Get a few extra drops in there. Uh, stealing will give you a very high chance of getting the Trinket as well, which you, of course, are going to want. So, um, yeah, that's the loadout I'm going to recommend you use. It's a really strong loadout. It works really well. Uh, of course, I didn't peep the Wasp Queen. I was going to show you all the stuff that she um, that she's resistant to. But she's basically resistant to every damage type except generic. Um, so she is resistant to the dagger. But there's not really a one-handed generic weapon as far as I'm aware. Uh, well, technically the Salt Morningstar is. But I didn't think it was as good as the Widow Dagger personally. Purely based on speed. The reason I'm using, I'm using this is because of speed alone makes it really, really strong. If you enjoyed this video and you appreciate me making this build for you, then don't forget to leave a like on it. I will see you in the next Grounded video. Have a great rest of your day.